Hi, I'm Alyssa Reeser, a student at the University of Washington, and today I'm going to show you how to make a bat rocket box. To begin construction of your bat house, you're first going to need to gather materials. The materials you will need include a sheet of plywood that is greater than one half inch thick, a four inch by four inch untreated wood post, a hammer and a rasp, a nail gun, although screws are greatly preferred because they hold the house together for longer. You will also need non-toxic paintable wood caulk and non-toxic black house paint and primer if you have it. You should never use oil-based products because they are toxic to bats. You also need roofing materials to keep your bats dry and mounting materials. I am using rebar, but a 4 inch by 4 inch post set in concrete or a 2 inch metal pipe are also good options. Finally, you will need sawing tools, but you can also get the wood cut at a hardware store if you don't have any sawing materials. Also, please don't forget your personal protective equipment. Please take precautions and keep yourself safe when using any power tools or hand tools. We started our construction of the bat house by cutting the necessary housing pieces out of the plywood using a table saw. Here, you can see the plywood layout that we are going to use. We cut two rectangles measuring 6 and 1 8 inches by 36 inches and labeled them front and back. We then cut two rectangles measuring 5 and 1 8 inches by 31 inches and labeled them side 1 and side 2. Once we cut those four rectangles, we took the front piece and marked the halfway point on the smaller side and five inches down on the 36 inch side. We marked five inches down the other 36 inch side as well, and then we cut two triangles from the rectangle between the marked points to form a point at the top of the front piece. Then we did the same thing to the back piece. Then we cut two more rectangles measuring five inches by seven inches and labeled them roof one and roof two. With the remaining plywood, we cut eight approximately one inch by one inch squares from the plywood to be spacers. However, larger spacers, such as one inch by two inches, are preferred because they are less likely to fall apart over time. Here, you can see all of the pieces of the bat rocket box laid out on this table. To put the bat house together, we caulked one of the side pieces and placed the back piece on top and secured it with the nail gun. Then we secured the other side piece to the back piece using the same process. We caulked the inside creases to fill in all of the gaps to make sure the bats stay warm. It is important in our cold Pacific Northwest climate to make sure bat houses can retain heat. Then we flipped the house over and caulked the other two sides and carefully put the front piece on and secured it with the nail gun. We reached inside with the caulk gun to once again caulk the inside pieces. Now that the main part of the house is done, we are ready to put the roof on. We started by mitering one 7 inch edge of each roof piece so it fits together in a point at the top, which we secured with caulk and the nail gun. We made a mistake with the size of our roof pieces when cutting, but luckily we had some spare plywood so we made each roof out of two plywood pieces and made sure to caulk in the creases. We attached the roof to the house with more caulk and the nail gun just like we did before. Later, we went back and supplemented the nails with screws to make sure the house stays secure and does not fall apart. After the caulk dried in about 10 minutes, we put a coat of primer on the entire house except for the roof and left it to dry while we started working on the post. To prepare the post, we drilled a hole in the bottom of the post, right in the middle, that is the same size as our mounting rebar. We flipped the post around and on the top side we marked the midpoint of one of the 4 inch sides and marked another point approximately 7 inches down the post. We connected the dots to make a triangle. We made the same mark 7 inches down the other side of the post and drew a second triangle so the post came to a point. We cut both triangles out to form a point at the top of the post. This point is what is going to align with the roof of the bat house. On one side of the post, right below the start of the point cut, we marked one inch into the post and seven inches down the side of the post and used those markings to saw a notch into the post for bats to roost. We made another notch on the opposite side of the post with the same measurements right where the first notch began. We made one last notch seven inches below the first one with the same measurements. These notches are important to create so bats can roost in your bat house, but they can also be places where wasps and bees like to make their nests. It's important to keep an eye on your bat house and maintain it so no wasp or bee nests form. 
You can stop wasp or bee nests from forming by knocking them out before they become too big. I would recommend using a garden hose and doing this at night, but be careful of any bats, or in the winter when the bees are cold and less aggressive or when wasps leave for the season. Please do not use insecticides because they are toxic to bats and will absorb into the wood of the bat house. Now, back to the post. We spent a long time rasping each of the sides and roughening up the edges and sides so the bats can cling to the roosts. Hopefully they don't get any splinters! We took the rasping a step further and added in some dents by hitting the post with the back of the hammer so the bats can use those little dents to climb into the bat house. We used the nail gun to secure about two spacers on each side, one near the top and one halfway down the post. Instead of using a spacer on one side, we added one of the cutout notches, cut down to 3 fourths inch thick, just to add a little fun for the bats. Alright, and here is the completed post, spacers and all! After the primer was dry in about an hour, we added a little bit of black paint around the roof of the house and let it dry. Then, we cut shingles out of the roofing material and stapled shingles to the roof of the house. You don't have to be as extravagant as this, but we just wanted to add a little bit of pizzazz to the bat house, so we decided to make the shingles a little bit fancy. After the roof was done, we painted the entire bat house black, which is incredibly important to make sure the bat house heats up in the sun. Over the course of the week, we added two more coats of black paint to the house. After your bat house is done, you are going to want to make sure the paint does not chip or peel away in the weather and the caulk stays secure. Like I mentioned earlier, our cold Pacific Northwest climate means the bats have to stay extra toasty while roosting. After our bat house was completely dry at the week's end, we determined the perfect location for our bat house, an open clearing in full sun throughout the day. You do not want to put your bat house in a tree or on a building because it may block the sun during the day. The clearing was also near a pond for bats to get water and eat insects that may gather by the water. It's nice to have your bat house near a source of water so bats can stay hydrated. We hammered the rebar approximately 2-3 to three feet into the ground, however concrete is preferred when possible. There are many mounting options, please refer to the Bats Northwest brochure on Rocket Box Bat Houses for more information. The most important part is that the bottom of the bat house is 8 feet above the ground, 12 feet if possible, to keep predators like cats from grabbing emerging bats. We put the post on top of the rebar, using the hole we drilled in the bottom of the post and glue in the hole to keep the house securely mounted. Finally, we put the bat house over the post so the point of the post lined up with the roof and secured the bat house to the post by screwing screws into the spacers. Now the bat house is complete! When the bats find our house, which we hope will be soon, they will enter through the bottom of the house. All in all, the bat house took us about 5 hours to complete with lots of messing around, filming, and fun. Now go out and have fun building a rocket box bat house with a group of friends and family and help our local Pacific Northwest bats.